Hi, my name is Philip. Today I will give you a brief introduction to data mining. We will learn about what is data mining, what can we do with data mining, and also why we do data mining. So let's start. So nowadays, in these days, there's a lot of data because uh, first, computers are cheap. It is not expensive to buy a hard drive to store a lot of data for the for the individuals, but also for the company, the business, the government, and so on. And also, transferring data is very fast nowadays, and also uh, not expensive with the internet and so on. And also, we can have a lot of small and cheap devices to collect a lot of data. For example, most of you have uh, smartphones and so on. The smartphones can collect a lot of data. It has a lot of sensors and also uh, it can also send and receive or you can take pictures and so on. So nowadays we have more and more data. So here I give you a few examples. In the future, uh, more and more we'll have the vehicles that like the cars that can communicate can send the data with, f with each other, so with the traffic light, or also with the cloud and, and so on, the connected cars. Also, uh, we talk more and more about uh, the Internet of Things, so all these things in daily life, these objects like the light, uh, the door, the fridge, they can be connected, they can also exchange data. Uh, a few years ago, there, the, there was some prediction that say there will be a 30 billion connected object in 2020, for example. Okay. Uh, also, there's a lot of data nowadays collected from humans, like your movements, or it could be the brain signals, if we want to understand what happened in the brain, uh, skin conductivity data, heart rate data, blood pressure, eye movement, also the, the location, like trajectories, when you drive the car, uh, where do you go, and so on. Okay, so all of this is data from humans. We also have a lot of data from the industry, like data about employees, about customers, about the market. Uh, data for banking, like uh, how the people spend the money, their income, and so on. There's also data in the retail industry, like what the people buy, the review of products, like on, on the website, like Amazon and so on, uh, the behavior of customers and so on. So this is just a brief introduction to tell you that nowadays we have so much data for, for the individuals, for the businesses, the government and others, okay. So as a result of this, we have a huge amount of data, what we call often uh, the big data also. I guess you have heard about this, okay? Big data means, uh, one definition means a lot of data. So having a lot of data is great, but we want to be able to understand the data. If you just have a lot of data, but you, you don't know how, wh what kind of conclusion you can draw from this data, or what you can do with this data, then all this data is useless, okay? So we want not only to have data, but we want to be able to discover no new knowledge from the data that will help us to understand, okay? And take maybe some decision. For example, if you have data about what the people buy in a supermarket, then you know what, what the people buy, but you would like to uh, extract some knowledge from this. Like there are three types of customers. Maybe uh, the, some people like to buy wine every weekend and so on. So if you understand more about the patterns in the data, or what people like to buy together, or the different types of customers, then maybe you can do marketing and so on. So. Doing this is necessary if we want to, to use the data to do something uh, with, with our data, all this data that we have. So here I have a picture, it's from the book of Han and Camber that illustrate this problem. We have a lady here, maybe she's the owner of a business and so on, and she has a lot of data and she asks, how can I analyze my data, let's say, about all her customers and so on. So, one solution could be, what about we analyze the data by hand? So that means 
we look at the data and we just read line by line and try to to see what what, what happened in our data what, what what are the values what is special in our data okay so of course we could do this but if you have a lot of data when we talk about big data for example it would be very time consuming to look at uh, millions of records okay and also maybe even if you look at the data by hand you could miss some important information and even you could make some errors uh, and so on so analyzing the data by hand is possible especially if you don't have a lot of data but when we talk about big data and so on it is better to have some software okay we'll talk about data mining so it will be about this about how to use the software to analyze the data uh, more or less automatically or semi-automatically to help us to analyze big big amounts of data so what is data mining Data mining means we have some data and we want to analyze the data to build some model or to find some interesting information to discover some interesting patterns in the data that can help us to understand or maybe to take the decision and so on. Okay. So, and we want this to be automatic or maybe semi automatic maybe the human has to intervene okay so there are two goals in data mining mostly understand the past or predict the future so for example maybe you have historical data about the earthquakes and you want to understand the past why there was an earthquake last year so what are the reasons was there something abnormal and so on maybe you want to detect some patterns in the data that will explain why there was an earthquake or predict the future will there be an earthquake tomorrow for example or in a few weeks so now we can also build some model maybe that will allow us to, to make some prediction from our data or another example if we have customers in a bank we want to predict will they pay back the money that the bank as given to them okay they have borrowed from the bank the customers have borrowed some money so yes or no is it risky to give money to these people will they refund the money or not okay so data mining is useful as i said to analyze data but how can we do data mining so if we want to do data mining there is a process usually that we need to follow that consists of seven steps this process is called uh, knowledge discovery of often okay so data mining actually you can think about this as one step of that process okay let me show you the steps and i will explain in more details so the process of knowledge discovery has seven steps as we can see here and what we call data mining will be step five okay so let me have a look with you step by step what are the steps the first the first four steps are about preparing the data the first step is data cleaning means you have a lot of data let's say about your customers but there are some problem in the data some noise or inconsistencies so for example you have data about customers but some of them they don't have the birth date okay or some of them have an age that is over 200 years old okay so these are problems in the data before you use the data to analyze the data you need to clean the data find the problems is there some inconsistencies is there some customers appear many times in your data so you should fix this before you analyze the data so this is a data cleaning another step is data integration means you have data maybe different types of data or different sources of data and you want to integrate them together to analyze them so for example maybe you have data from a database about customers but you also have data about uh, the orders from the factory and so on and you want to combine these two databases 
to do some analysis. So you need to first integrate these uh, different types of data and then you can do data mining with this together. So of course it depends what you want to find. Okay, You need to have a goal, what you want to find in your data and then you decide which data you need and how to integrate. The third step is data selection means to choose the data that you need to analyze. So let's say you have a lot of data about customers in a bank. Maybe you don't need all the data. Okay, some is irrelevant for what you want to know. So if you want to know if the customer will pay back or not, maybe some information is not important, like what is the email of the customer. So you don't need to include this in your analysis. Then maybe you will get better results. Another step, step four, after you clean the data and so on, is data transformation. It means maybe the data is not in the correct format and so on, and you want to convert to the right format so you can use your data mining algorithms. Okay, so let's say the data is a numbers, but you want to apply some algorithm the data cannot be numbers, it must be some uh, strings, some label, okay, some, some uh, characters. So you need to first convert your data to apply some algorithm. So this is the data transformation. And then step five, after you finish preparing all your data, step five is to discover the patterns in your data, what we call data mining. So here you choose some algorithm you apply in your data and the algorithm will reveal some patterns in your data. Maybe, let's say you look at shopping data, you find many people like to buy the wine every week or many people like to buy the wine with the bread and so on. Okay, so you discover some patterns using the data mining algorithm. So this is the step we call data mining. And then after this, after you find patterns or you build some model from your data, you want to evaluate this pattern. You discover something in your data, but you want to know, is it useful? So let's say you want to do prediction, so you can evaluate. Does it give good prediction, the patterns or the model you extract from your data? And maybe also step seven, you want to visualize what you discovered. So there's a lot of way to visualize uh, patterns or models uh, that you build from your data. So, in general, there are many data mining techniques, algorithms that you can use to analyze data. Data mining techniques are generally applicable to large volumes of data, but some of them maybe does not work for the big data. Okay, they only work for the the small set of data. Maybe because the complexity of this uh, technique, the time complexity or the space complexity is not good. Okay, So there are many different techniques and some of them are specialized for different types of data. So if your data is a pictures or videos or it is a text or spatial data, then you use different algorithms. And also depending what you want to discover in your data, or how you want to use what you find in your data, you will also choose different algorithm. So maybe you will choose some algorithm to do prediction or some algorithm to find some clusters, some groups in your data or other things. So depending, you always need to think what you want to do and then you choose some algorithm that are suitable for what you want to do. So what are the application of data mining? Uh, I will give you a few examples. One of them is a fraud detection. Okay, in fraud detection, you have data, let's say, about what the customer buy with their credit card, and you want to detect the fraud. You want to find some uh, transactions with the credit card that are uh, bad, okay, from bad people to steal the money and so on, okay. So like some people store some credit card and so on. So this is fraud detection, okay. Another topic is uh, 
to analyze the trends on the stock market maybe you want to predict the price of, of the stock for IBM or Apple and so on to uh, try to 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 earn some money okay on the stock market also another example is to analyze the behavior of customers in terms of what they buy in a store to uh, try to predict or do some marketing to, to improve the sales for your store. Uh, related to this, we could also recommend some products to customers, for example, like on Amazon and so on, or other things. So there are many, many applications because there are data in uh, so many applications. So if we have data, we can do uh, data mining, actually, okay. So data mining is an interdisciplinary research field. Uh, a big part of this is about computer science, so about a database system, because we want to uh, know how the data is uh, stored and how to access the data quickly and so on. Also, it is about algorithmic, because we need to design good algorithm to analyze data. Uh, computer science, of course, machine learning, if we want to do prediction and other things, uh, data visualization, and of course, uh, statistics is also very important to analyze data. And also, there are different applications also. So, there are many uh, aspects, uh, different uh, uh, field, research field, that are taking part in what we call data mining. So, maybe you wonder what is the difference between data mining and statistic. So, there are some uh, difference, but also some overlap, actually, okay? So, it is very close. Uh, in statistic, there are mainly two big branch of, uh, branches of uh, statistic. We call the descriptive statistic. It is about describing the data, okay? So, let's say you have some data. You want, for example, to calculate the average, the standard deviation, and so on. So these are some measures you can use to describe your data. But also, in statistics, you have another branch called the inferential statistic. So the goal here is to test some hypothesis, like you want to draw a conclusion, uh, or maybe you want to, to see if two uh, aspects in your data are correlated and so on okay is it significant or not so these are different branches of uh, statistics so in data mining it is uh, actually similar actually it is overlapping data mining you can think about this as uh, something maybe more automated okay you use some software that is sometimes completely automated or a little bit automated to discover maybe some unknown property in your data like the trend, the anomalies, correlation and so on. And often in data mining, it is the end result that is the most important. Many people in data mining, they don't really care about the statistical significance. Let's say they build a model to uh, recommend the products on the website, okay, the, the store, the web store. Then if the, the model increase the money for the store, then it is okay, okay. Maybe they don't need to uh, check is it significant or not and so on. They just want to build a model that will increase the money and that's all, okay. So data mining, the difference between data mining and statistic uh, there, there's some overlap, but I would say data mining is a little bit more practical, okay, and less about the significance. But of course, you you can also have a statistical significance in data mining and so on, okay. And in fact, there are some people they use the term statistical learning, and statistical learning actually. It means about the same as data mining or machine learning. So it means to use statistical methods to to have uh, to learn to to like do some prediction and so on. So 
Statistical learning and data mining is almost the same thing, actually. So it depends from which field you are. And also nowadays, there are many people that use the, the, the term data science. Data science is another popular term. Uh, and actually, it is a, a term that is newer than data mining, okay? And for me, it means about the same thing. Or, But usually, it is more used by people from uh, statistics, from what I see. And here, there's a joke on this slide. Some people say a data scientist is a statistician who lives in San Francisco or do statistics on a Mac, okay? So this is just some jokes. Uh, I found this on the internet. I don't have the source here. But actually, it's just to say that it's just another kind of uh, buzzword, and it means the same as uh, statistics or, or data mining, okay? Okay, so why should we use data mining? Because we have a lot of data, as I said, and we want to take decision based on facts rather than based on intuition okay so we want the data but we don't want to analyze by hand we want to build some model we want to check these model they are good or not for example according to some measures and we want based on this to be able to take the good uh, decision okay so if you want to do data mining you could use some software there's a lot of uh, popular software to do data mining here i list a few of them like weka nime r or spmf this is my own software okay that i have developed with many other people and each software have different features advantages limitation also there's uh, some language like python or r and so on uh, can be used to analyze data. So there's a lot of choice. So the data mining software, here I show a few pictures at the bottom of this slide. They have different features like a user interface. They can read different type of data. They have visualization and so on. Okay, so you could try different one to see which one you like. So here I show you some example. I have some data, let's say, about uh, customers, okay? So there are two axes. It could be the age and the salary or something like that, or other data, whatever it is. And let's say you have some data points. Each point is represent one customer. So if we do data mining, what could we find? For example, if we use some technique like clustering, we could find that there are three groups of uh, customers in our data, okay? So here yeah, I draw some circle because some points are closer together and maybe we think they are different types of uh, people, for example, if these points represent some people, okay? So this is just an example to show you uh, something maybe we could discover in the data. Of course, it's just a small example. Okay, so uh, in the data mining software, many data mining techniques can be used on the huge database, but also it can be good to use data mining on the small databases. And what is interesting, as I said before, we can use data mining on different types of data. So let me show you a few examples. So different types of data. Uh, one type of data we can analyze, it is the relational database. It is like some table, as you can see here. So here we have table about the people visiting some hospital. So we have the patient ID, the name, date of birth, gender, phone, and so on. Okay, so this is what we call the relational database, okay? or uh, from like a database system, okay, like SQ, with SQL and so on, okay. So if we have data like this, we could analyze to find uh, patterns maybe about the people visiting the hospital. So normally, uh, if we have a database like this, 
we could use uh, the language like SQL, okay? With a traditional database system, we could do some search, like find all the patients that are male and more than 20 years old. This will find some result. But data mining is more than this, okay? So here I want to highlight the difference between data mining and just searching in a database. In a traditional database system, you can do some query to search. But data mining, the difference is we want to find something more complex. We want to build some complex model. Maybe from this data, we want to predict who is more likely to die and so on, who we should treat first at the hospital and so on. Okay. So it, data mining is not just about searching for some values in the data, but it is about building models or extracting some more complex information, doing some complicated analysis of your data. Other type of data, a second type, is transactional data, what the people buy in a store, for example. So here I have a small example. I have a transaction database. It is a table. We have customer one, two, three, and we know what they buy. Like customer one buy the bread and noodles. Customer two buy milk and noodles and so on. So having the data like this, we can find correlation, for example, between what the people like to buy. So here, for example, we see many people like to buy milk with noodles. So maybe we could sell them together and so on to try to earn more money. Other type of data that are popular is the temporal data, like sequences, okay? Like a series of uh, symbols like A, B, C, B, A, C, D, E. So, what we can do with a sequence, okay, not numbers, sequence of uh, symbols. For example, we could have sequence of clicks on a web page and we want to predict what is the next web page that the people will visit. Or we could analyze the DNA, like the for the virus and so on, okay. Try to understand the similarity between different viruses. Or we could look at the sequences of moves in a game like chess, okay, to try to, to find some patterns how people are playing the game and so on, okay. So all of this is uh, some sequence with or without the time, okay. It can be called the temporal data also. Another popular type of data is the time series. Time series is also a sequence, but it is a sequence of numbers. So here, for example, I have some picture. And in this chart, it could be the temperature. Okay, every day we look at the temperature outside and we put a number to record the temperature outside. Okay, or it could be the price on the stock market. So the data here is a sequence of numbers may be ordered by the time and we want to do some analysis like predict what will happen tomorrow okay another type of data is the spatial data so about the space or like a map and so on like gps data so it could be data about the forest the ecology the roads and so on the cars on the road or also, we could have the spatio-temporal data. That means data with space and time, okay? So we want to predict the weather data, the crowd movement, or the bird migration, and so on. Uh, another type of data very popular is the text data, like the web pages, or the reviews for a product, and so on. So there's a lot of data mining tasks we can do with this. Like we could try to predict if someone will like a movie or not, or a product, based on uh, the, the comments, the reviews that the person write. Or we could try to uh, summarize a document or a book, uh, and, and so on. Okay, so many things we can do with the text data. 
Also, we have the web data. The web means some document like web pages with text, pictures, or videos, and also some links between the document. So we can do also many things with the web data, like analyze the data from attacks, analyze the time that the people spend on the web pages, or group the web pages by topics, and so on. Okay, so many things. Another type of data are the graphs. So graphs are used, for example, in the social networks. Uh, for example, in social networks, we could try to find the communities of people, analyze the relationship between people, or predict who will be friend with who, to do some recommendation, maybe who could be your friend, or find the people who has the most influence, or the location of a person, and so on. Okay, there are many things we can do with graphs. Also, uh, we talk about heterogeneous data. What does it mean? Okay, it means that you have different types of data that you combine together, a different format. So maybe you have uh, spatial data, temporal data, uh, GPS data, and text data. And then you want to analyze all of this together. So of course, it's not easy, okay. But maybe sometimes we want to do this. Another type of data that is popular nowadays is the data stream. So what is this data stream? It is some data that will always come non-stop, okay? It is a stream of data. There are always some new data that will arrive. So for example, if you have some satellite that send the data from space, Maybe the satellite will send a lot, a lot of data and it will never, never stop. Okay, so like the satellite data or the video cameras and so on. So the challenge for this is that we want to analyze the data in real time. Okay, so there are so much data and the data arrives all the time. So we need to analyze the data in real time try to summarize the data or detect some changes in the data is is there something unusual uh, and so on okay so there are a lot of researchers also working on data streams okay so now i talk to you about the different types of data i want to talk to you about different types of patterns or model we can extract from the data. What can we do with the data? I'll give you a few examples. So one of the most important tasks in data mining is clustering. Clustering means if you have some data, you want to find some groups that appear in the data, some objects in your data that are similar together and you want to find these special groups in your data. So here I have a picture to explain this. Let's say I have data about a lot of people in a bank and all these people are different points. So each person has different attributes like the age, the salary and so on. And we want to group the people that are similar together. So by using data mining, we could find, for example, that there are three main groups of people in our bank. So maybe the young people, the older people, the people are retired and so on. And the people that are retired and so on. Okay. Some application of this also are to find the hospital patient that have similar profile or group the animals together or find the students that have the similar profile and so on. So clustering means to find some groups in the data, what we call clusters actually. Cluster means group. Another popular task is called classification. So classification is related to clustering, but it is different actually. So the idea in classification, you want to build a model that will help us to classify some uh, object or people 
in two different categories or what we call classes okay so for example you have a lot of customers in a bank and you want to predict which customer will pay back the money or will not pay back the money so it is less if you have two categories or classes one class is the people who pay back and another class is the people who will not pay back okay so you have a new customer come to the bank based on the people you saw before you can build a model that will help you to categorize the new customer given his age and so on you can make a prediction this person belong to the class of people who will pay back or to the people who will not pay back okay so the goal of classification is to have a model that will help you to decide one person or object belong to which group of people the people who pay back or don't pay back and so on uh, another example classification can be used to predict which student will pass or fail a course or if you do the character you you draw the the letters with your pen the the cell phone could use the camera to uh, guess what character it is is it a, a or b or c and so on okay so this is also classification so to do classification there's a lot of techniques like neural network svm and so on okay we could talk about this later so here for example i have a small example i have data about the weather outside and whether we go out to to play the tennis or not the game okay the sport so this is the data here the training data i have each line is about one day okay so today it is sunny the temperature is hot is humid high the wind is weak okay and we did not go to play the the tennis the sport okay so then i have the similar data for different days okay so like every day i record the data about is it sunny hot and the people go to play the sport or not then from this data we call it training data we can build a model like the decision tree this model can help us to make the prediction <clears throat> so let's say tomorrow it is sunny hot normal and the wind is weak we want to decide we will play or we will not play so based on the model here we can do a prediction that yes we will play so maybe this prediction is correct or wrong but based on our data we build a model that will give a prediction okay and hopefully it is a good prediction so this is an example of one type of model we can use to do the classification okay the this kind of prediction okay so other things we can do with data mining is to look at a group of uh, instances instances means like people or objects and so on so maybe we want to find what is common to some group of instances like people or like what are what is common to the successful movies the movies that make a lot of money or the the people that spend the most money in a restaurant we want to understand uh, wh wh what is common to these people or maybe we want to find what is different between two groups of people like what is the difference between the good movies and the bad movies and so on okay so all of these are examples of things we can do with data mining also another thing we can do is to find patterns in the data so one thing in data mining is to find the patterns that appear many times frequently in your data so for example we look about the data from tourists in a city like uh, shenzhen and we find that uh, most of the tourists are less than 30 years old and they like to eat uh, i don't know something like noodles and other things okay so 
if we find some special patterns, like what people like to do or eat when they visit the city, then we can understand more about uh, the, the tourist, maybe do some marketing and so on to bring more people. Or maybe we find some uh, strong association, like 60% of the people who visit the Guangdong uh, province will also visit this city and so on. So of course, this is just some example, okay, but just to give you some idea. Another topic in data mining that is important is to find the outliers or anomalies. So what is what does it mean? Okay, outlier or anomalies means something special in your data that is different, that is unusual, okay? Not something normal, something that is abnormal, okay? So for example, you have a lot of data about the people at the airport and there are a lot of people that are normal at the airport, but you want to find the potential terrorist, okay? So among thousands of people that are normal, you want to find the people that are different to maybe uh, to, to try to stop them, okay? Or detect the hackers in a computer system. So in a computer system, maybe there's a lot of normal people use the computer system, but you want to find the outliers, the hackers or the fraud, okay, in the, the bank and so on. Uh, another thing we can do in data mining is to find the trend or the periodic patterns and other things. So you look at the data in the stock market, for example, you want to find some trends to try to do some prediction to make some money and so on. Okay. So here I give you more examples. Uh, you can have a look if you want. So generally, we have data. We want to find the good patterns or the good model in our using our data. Build some good models or find patterns in our data to understand or do prediction and so on. So what does it mean? Interesting. Okay, we want to find something interesting. So in data mining, when you use data mining, you can find millions of patterns or you can build a lot, hundreds of models with your data. But what is really interesting for you? As humans, you don't want to look at millions of patterns or you don't want to look at hundreds of models. So you need to find a way to define what is really interesting for you. So if I have some data for the bank, I need to have some idea about what I want to do with my data, what I want to discover and so on. I need to define what is useful. Useful maybe means I build a good model if it can make good prediction and I can make some profit, some money, okay? Or I can increase the sales and so on. So we need to define some way to evaluate the models or the patterns using different measure. And usually this is done after the data mining. After you build some model or you find patterns in your data, you want to, to test them, to evaluate them. Is it a good model or not? Will it, will it increase the profit or not if I use this model and so on? Okay. So what is an interesting pattern in the data? Here I give you some idea. A pattern or model could be interesting if it is easy to understand, if it is uh, valid for the new data. So let's say you find a very good model for the customers in a bank, but the, the, there is some change. Okay, so maybe this model is not true in the future. So if your model cannot be used in the future, maybe it is not useful. And also useful, maybe it helps you to earn more money and so on. And it is something novel or unexpected. You learn something new. If you do data mining, but you find something you know already, then it's not really useful. So there are many ways to uh, decide what is a good model or some good patterns in your data. I will not explain uh, this today, okay. 
So, in conclusion today in this video, I have give you a very brief overview about what is data mining, why we do data mining, uh, the different types of data, and also a little bit what we could do with data mining. Okay, we want to build model, or find patterns, and we want to find the good model, the good patterns, and so on. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. You can also watch my other video to learn more about data mining. Thank you.